Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, the subject of today's lecture is the function arc cosine. Um, we will examine its properties. Um, I recommend you to go through introduction to inverse trigonometric functions. Um, this is uh, number two lecture in series of uh, relatively short lectures about properties of trigon uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So today it's about arc sine. And um, whenever I talk about functions, I do prefer to talk about the graphs of these functions because graphs really help to understand how the function behaves. Now, talking about inverse trigonometric functions, um, as I have explained in the introduction, the traditional trigonometric function, any trigonometric function, has no inverse function. And the reason is very simple. So, if uh, we are talking about arc cosine, so let's try from, uh, let's start from the graph of the cosine. Now, the graph of the cosine is this. And then infinite number of waves, right? So this is 0. This is pi over 2. This is pi, 3 pi over 2. This is minus pi over 2, minus pi, minus 3 pi over 2, etc. x, y. So the domain where the function is defined uh, is all the real numbers. The real number, in this case, represents uh, an angle in radians. And the range is from minus 1 to, one, to, to, to plus 1. Now, the function does not have an inverse for a very, very simple reason. What is an inverse function? We have to find an argument if you know the, the value of the function. Well, if this is the value of the function, then we have to draw uh, we have to draw this line and see where it crosses our graph and some other points. So this point is, this argument has this value of the function of the cosine. And this, fun and this argument also has exactly the same value of the cosine. So if you have the value of the cosine, you cannot uniquely determine the value of um, the argument, in which case you just say that there are no inverse functions in this case. If you cannot determine an argument by the value of the function, function is not inversible. Well, but we want to inverse it, right? And as in uh, the case with arc sine, for instance, function, we just have to reduce our cosine function, define the new cosine function, if you wish, reduce the domain where this function is defined. How can we reduce it? Well, right now the function is defined on an entire x-axis. Any real number is, is, uh, is good as an argument. Now, um, what's the reasonable way to reduce it? Well, we will reduce it to the interval where number one on this interval function is monotonous. If it's monotonous, it's invertible or inversible, whatever you say. Uh, and the secondly is, second point is that in this interval, uh, we would like function to take everything within its range. So all the values which cosine in theory can take, it does take in this reduced variant. So where exactly I can choose um, an area on the x-axis where the function cosine is monotonous and takes all the uh, values from its range. Well, its range is from minus 1 to 1, to, to one and as, 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 as you know, some kind of a, one of the variants that can be suggested is from 0 to pi and the function has the graph this on this interval. Now let's think about it. it's monotonous. It's monotonously decreasing from 0 to pi. 
function is monotonous and it takes all the values, minus 1 and 1. Can we choose some other interval, let's say from minus pi to 0? Yes, we can. Then the function would be monotonous. It would be monotonously increasing in this case from minus 1 to 1, so it's good as well. But traditionally, we choose from 0 to pi. Why? I don't know. Because it's positive. There are some reasons, but it doesn't really matter. Any interval is good where the function is monotonous and takes all the values from its range. And traditionally, from 0 to pi is taken as this particular interval. So everything outside of this interval does not exist anymore. A new function, cosine, is not defined outside of this interval. And on this interval, function is reversible, is inversible, or invertible, whatever. So, be because it's monotonous, and it's convenient that the function takes all the values from the range. So, whatever the value of y is in this particular equation, we can always find the proper value of x if we are not using a traditional, original cosine function, but the new cosine function, which is reduced as far as its domain is concerned. So now we can talk about the function y is equal to arc cosine of x and have its domain exactly the same as the range of the original function. So I can always put any value into the x from the range of this function. And as far as its range, it fills up completely 0 pi interval. So the function uh, y is equal to cosine of x, the new function cosine, maps domain from 0 to pi to a range from minus 1 to, minus, uh, to plus 1. The function arc cosine x maps uniquely, obviously, domain of minus 1 to 1, which is the range of this function, into the range 0 to pi, which is the domain of this function. Now, you know that the function which is um, inverse uh, to the original function has a graph symmetrical uh, relative to the angle bisector to this one. Well, let's basically show it in this particular case. I think I need this place. Okay, so this is y is equal to cosine of x. So now, domain of this function minus 1 to 1. So it's uh, something like this, minus 1 to 1. Now, its range is 0 to pi. So the y takes the value from 0 to pi. So it's in this rectangle. By the way, the rectangle from the original function is this one, right? So as you see, we could just turn this rectangle by 90 degrees to get the graph symmetrical relative. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't really turn it by 90 degrees. I turn it over around the bisector. That, that's more precise. I turned it over around the bisector. So let's just see how it goes. Now, our original function, cosine, at 0 equals to 1, which means this one at x is equal to 1 should give me 0, right? So that's the point. Next, at pi over 2, original function cosine has the value of 0. So the value of 0 of, uh, of this function is pi over 2. So at 0, it's equal to pi over 2, it's somewhere here. And finally, for pi, 
uh, my original function is equal to minus 1, which means for, one, for minus 1, this function should give the pi, which is this. And the graph would be like this. So these two graphs, this one and the red one, are symmetrical relatively to the angle bisector. And the symmetry was explained, actually, where I was talking about inverse functions. That's very simple. Well, that's it. These are properties of the cosine. We have established that this is, the arc cosine is the function which is defined on the interval from minus 1 to 1, and it's decreasing from pi to 0 on this interval. That's as much as can be said, and uh, it uniquely uh, maps this domain into the range, and the range covers basically everything which original function reduced to whatever the interval of monotonousness um, was defined. Okay, that's it. I recommend you to go through notes for this lecture at unisor.com uh, just to be able to, you know, refresh and understand everything, whatever is it there. And that's it for this lecture. This is the second lecture out of six for each trigonometric function. I will explain what's the inverse function. Uh, thank you very much and good luck.